So today we're going to learn how to do timed gaze input uh, for Google VR. So this will work for uh, both Cardboard or Daydream in uh, Android or iOS. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to File, Build Settings, and we're going to switch the platform to iOS. If you're building to Android, that'll work just as well. Next, uh, let's go ahead and uh, import the Google VR package. So I'm just going to click on the actual package itself that I've downloaded and make sure it imports. Um, and you can take off the demo scenes because you really don't need those. So after it uh, imports, let's delete the main camera uh, because we're going to be using the actual camera prefab that comes with uh, Google VR, and that's actually the GVR main. So go ahead and drag that into your scene and open up the uh, the children and get the main camera selected. So once you've done that, let's uh, add a physics raycaster to the main camera, and let's go ahead and drag a GVR reticle onto the scene as a child of that same main camera. Now uh, let's go ahead and add an event system. And uh, we actually are not going to be using this touch uh, standalone input module. And let's actually add a gaze input module instead, because uh, obviously that's the one we're going to be using. So uh, let's next create a C Sharp script, and let's call it uh, Timed Input Handler. And so Timed Input Handler is going to be an interface that we're going to define, uh, that we're going to be using elsewhere in our project. So we uh, just need to make sure that we actually are using Unity Engine dot event system since uh, we're going to be firing events and we're going to need to be plugging into the uh, event system that we just added to our thing. So let's go ahead and declare that interface and uh, let's actually inherit from IE event system handler. So let's remove the start and update and just define a, a function called handle time input. And so this will be implemented in classes and objects that inherit from this interface that we just created. So let's go ahead and save that, and let's go back to our project. So let's go back to the main camera's GVR reticle, and let's click on the GVR reticle script component, and let's edit that script. So I know this looks a little scary, but all we're going to do is we're going to initialize a float that we're going to call gaze start time and as well as a game object that we're going to call gazedat to keep track of both how long we've been gazing and the object that we've been gazing at. So in our start function, uh, let's just make sure that we set gaze start time uh, to a value like negative one and gazedat, uh, let's make sure that's null to start with uh, just so that we don't run into any uh, weird exceptions or errors. So the first thing we need to do is plug into the on gaze start function that's already there in the script and we're going to change gazedat to equal the target object that is actually passed in for that function. And we're actually going to change gaze start time to the time.delta time at the moment of the start of the gaze. So once we've done that, uh, the next thing we're going to need to do, I forgot to do this, we're going to actually uh, we need to add a using Unity Engine dot event system so that we can uh, use some of the functions that uh, go along with that library. And let's actually go down to our on gaze stay and first thing we need to do is we need to do a check and make sure that uh, it's been at least, uh, let's go with three seconds since we started the gaze. And if it has, then we can evaluate the function within. And the actual function itself, uh, we're just going to do a execute events dot can handle event uh, for efficiency's sake. Uh, there are other types of event handling objects that can be handled in the same function, uh, but we're going to be using this one uh, today. So to follow along with good programming practices, uh, we're going to add an additional if statement uh, for checking if gazedat does not equal to null before we call anything on it, because that could lead to some weird reference exceptions. Um, so once we've added that check, actually another check that we're going to need to do is probably uh, if gaze start time is greater than zero, because uh, we don't want the, uh, the event to be fired more than, we don't, more than once on the same object at a time. And the last thing we're going to need to do is uh, we're going to need to reset the gaze start time to negative one if every, every time the, the check returns true and the event is fired so that it won't be called repeated on the same gaze again. So now that we've set up how events will be set, uh, we just need to find a way to test it. And that's actually relatively simple. So let's go ahead and save that. And uh, let's head back to Unity. And the first thing we're going to need to do is let's create a, a game object. Just uh, let's create a sphere. And let's uh, move it in front of the player so that you can actually see it. And let's create a new script for it. And so we're going to call this script timed input object. 
And so once we have that name down, let's open it up. And we're actually going to inherit from timed input handler, which if you remember was the interface that we created at the beginning of this video. So when you inherit from an interface, uh, we also need to declare the function that the interface requires, which in this case is handled time input. So let's uh, get that down. And then our start function, we are going to we're going to get component on the renderer, and we're going to change we're going to set the material color to white on start. And we can just do that with a simple color dot white on the material dot color. So once we've done that, let's uh, let's go ahead and copy that line and paste it into our handled timed input. And let's change that to color.blue so that when the actual event fires, we're actually going to change the color to blue. So let's go ahead and drag that onto the sphere and let's hit play. So if you see here, um, when we actually put our cursor on there, uh, after three seconds, the actual sphere will turn blue. So you can see that we've done that correctly. And just to show you again, I'm going to move it off. And there we go. That's it.